Has this ever happened to you? There's the check assembly that had broken and there's a moth in there too. How cool is that? Okay, so you don't always find bugs inside your sprinkler system, but it happens. Or maybe something different happened. Maybe you found this. So we obviously have a broken bonnet here. The whole piece is missing. So I loosened it up already. I'll take this off, but what is interesting is the poppet still has pressure underneath it. The water is off. That's telling me that something inside, probably the spring, is pushing up on this because the retainer clip is loose, but we'll see. Oh yeah, that retainer clip is loose. Okay, so how do you fix these problems? Well, let's get into it. I'll first start by looking at a brand new backflow and taking it all apart so you can see how each part fits together. That way you know what parts you need to replace and how to do it. Also, I'll put a link below in the comments of where to find all these parts so you can order them when you need them. So what we've got here is a three quarter inch Febco 765 pressure vacuum breaker. So I'm gonna open this up and we'll take it all apart. Here are the instructions. So we've got uh, the ball valve here, the second ball valve, the first ball valve, the water comes in from the bottom and then goes out according to that arrow. You've got the test port, test cock number one and two here. You've got the bell up here. This is the body. And then inside, we're gonna take a look at all the parts inside this Febco 765. So the first thing to do is you wanna remove this lock nut at the top. Off comes the lock nut, off comes the bell. Now you've got the bonnet here. You can see it's nice and tight the seal. This is brand new out of the box, obviously, but we're gonna take this apart so you can see everything inside of it. So you can remove it, you can use your hands, or you can use a specialty tool like this to remove it. Only use it to remove, don't use it to tighten it back on. So now that it's nice and loose, we can just take it off with our hands. see inside here it's got a o-ring on that and you have the poppet right here with the o-ring on that as well so then you can see down inside there so now we've taken the bonnet off and the poppet assembly out you can see down inside and this is uh, that brass piece there it's called the retainer and it's just in there by pressure you can see there's a spring underneath so if you push this and give it a twist, that retainer will come out. Let's see if we can twist this out here. So you'll see in this video, we take the retainer clip out. I use my hands, I got big hands, and I can get my fingers in and twist that retainer clip out. But you can use, I would recommend, a pair of pliers that handle end, but make sure that they are the same length. And it helps if they still have the plastic on there because then you can push it down give it a twist and it'll pop out. This is one case where channel locks won't come in handy. Normally they do, um, but they aren't even, and so you can't push down equally and twist. So any other pair of pliers that will fit inside, preferably ones that have the plastic on them, but they have to be the same length. That will allow you to push down on the retainer clip and give it a twist. Just a good tip. Then this retainer comes out, just has a, a clips there. Then you have a spring here. Then you have the check assembly here. These uh, can be brass like this one, or they can be plastic, either way. Then you can see down inside the backflow, you can see the silver ball valve there. If you open it up, you can see it goes all the way through there. So that's basically the inside guts of the backflow. There's nothing else in there. You can see, if you look through the ball valve here, you can see all the way through, and now it's shut. So that's basically 
all the guts of the 765. Learning how to take this type of backflow apart can be really beneficial. Not only can you fix it yourself and save yourself a ton of money, but also too, if you are working on a backflow, there's another th reason why you want to be able to take all the components out. For example, if you are doing any soldering or sweating copper below the backflow or near the backflow, and those components all heat up, it can cause damage to the plastic the metal inside will heat up. You can damage the diaphragms, the seals, all that stuff. So if you're gonna be soldering below a backflow, especially where the heat is gonna go up, take the components out. And then when you go to solder everything, all that heat will escape. Or if there's still water in the pipe and you're boiling it, all that steam will escape and you'll save yourself time fixing the backflow later. Another reason why you might want to take all the components out is to help your soldering go smoother. Because as you heat that up, if you have any water in the pipe, that begins to boil and that condensation will go up into those components and it might drip back down and you might not a good, get a good soldering joint. Or you might think, oh, well, I'm soldering below the ball valve. I'll just shut the ball valve off and make my soldering well that's true but then you trap all that heat and or water where you're going to be soldering and if you have water there your soldering joint might not connect it might not seal up because of the condensation inside so the best thing to do is if you're soldering there open everything up let the condensation go out then you'll have a good solid joint where you've soldered the copper together if you found that tip to be helpful Hit the subscribe button down below for more free practical sprinkler advice every week. Now, to put it back together, make sure we put back everything in its place. So first the check valve assembly, make sure it drops down in there where it needs to go. In the spring assembly, there's a little ridge on that check valve that you wanna make sure that spring sets into. Putting the retainer back is a little trickier. There's the middle hole here with a ridge that ridge will fit right on top of this spring like this I'll show you it fits like this so it doesn't move anywhere so make sure when you put the retainer back the retainer on the spring here it, you got it lined up so the check valve is back in the right place the spring is in the right place retainer clip now this ridge faces down so get that see that's in there push this in and twist like so you can see it's clipped in there it fits right into place on both sides that's ready to go then you can set the poppet assembly straight down inside and when you go to put the bonnet back on make sure this piece this brass piece fits inside of that otherwise so that poppet slides up and down and you hand tighten this don't use a tool to tighten this back down hand tighten only Then you can put this back on and your lock nut. That's the guts of the Fedco 765. Now these here are test cocks. I'm going to take these off. These plastic caps are just to protect uh, the threads, keeps things from getting inside. But these basically are just miniature ball valves inside here so these you can take off you can use a socket wrench <coughs> or a monkey wrench to take that off i've got my trusty channel locks here so you can grip this and just take it off like so if you go to put them back on make sure you use teflon tape because they will freeze and crack and that just goes right inside.
And same thing on this one. So you can see here, you can see that just a mini little ball valve in there. And this is a flathead screwdriver right here. So let's see if you can see inside of it. Uh, see, now you can see through it. Now it's closed. So that's the basic components of a 765 backflow preventer. Okay, so for this fix where there was a bug and a broken check valve assembly, how I replaced it was by buying a new one. There's nothing you can do and there's pieces that are broken inside, so you just have to replace them. So in this particular case, you have to buy the complete check valve assembly kit, and that has a check valve, the spring, and the retainer clip. You get those and you can put them back inside like we've seen in the video, and then you go ahead and put the bonnet and pop it back on if they're good. If not, you have to replace those as well. So how did I fix the other issue where the retainer clip was out of place? Well, I removed the bonnet and pop it, of course. Those were broken and had to be replaced. But then I looked at the check valve, the spring, and the retainer clip, and those were all good. So then all I had to do was put everything back inside and replace the new bonnet and pop it. Hopefully this gives you some confidence to do it yourself. And in the next video, we're gonna talk about a different type of backflow made by Febco. It's an 825Y. It's a reduced pressure backflow. So check out the next video and we'll get into it then. Thanks for watching.